The ownership and use of images is something that is often misunderstood by students and by adults. However, there are quite strict laws about this sort of thing and it is worth understanding them when you are using other people's images. So, for example, just because an image is published in this magazine, it doesn't stop it belonging to its owner. You can't reproduce this photo, you couldn't make posters out of it, you couldn't use it in an advertising campaign just because it had been published. And in fact, the words in here uh, originally belong to the writers and then they might have transferred ownership to the people who make the magazine. Likewise, um, the front of this DVD was probably produced by somebody being paid and so the company paying for that work would then own it and the company paying for it actually owned the rights to the movie. So everything on that movie, including the soundtrack, the dialogue, the images, everything actually belongs to the people who made it. Now, when I take a photo, I automatically own it. When you take a photo, you automatically own it. If I write a blog post, I automatically own it. Um, there are some cases where if you're hired to do something, then the rules are a little bit different. But generally speaking, you don't have to register your copyright, you just have it. Which brings us to the interesting use of, co of images on the internet. So here I am on Google, and I'm just going to shift myself um, over into the corner for a tick. Actually, I might go over to that side, I think. So, I'm on Google, I click on Images. I can now search for any number of images. So let's say I search for Penguin. Now, just because these images are on here doesn't mean that they belong to you. It is just like opening the phone book, if you still get phone books, or driving past a house. Just because you can see it doesn't mean that you own it. Just because you can see this image doesn't mean you've got a legal right to it. Any more than I've got a legal right to take a car because I can see it. I can't say, oh, I saw a car on the street. It must be free for people to take. It just isn't how it operates. So these images here, Google are providing them in their search, but they're also pointing you to where they came from, visit page. Now, I think a lot of people understand that you go there and you can, it's very easy to steal them. But you know what? I guess for the right person, it's very easy to steal cars. It doesn't mean that it's right and it doesn't mean that it's legal. So most people who create images don't actually want you to use them. But here's what you can do. One thing is, well, let's stay on Google Images for now. Go to Tools and you'll see Usage Rights. Now, not filtered for usage rights means you see everything, whether you're allowed to use it or not. And that's what most people start with. <clears throat> Label to reuse with modification means you can crop it, colour it, you can mo modify it. Label to reuse simply means you're allowed to reuse it, even for commercial purposes. Labelled for non-commercial reuse with modification means you can use it in your school project or around your home, but you can't go and put it on a coffee mug, you can't put it on a poster, you can't put it on a building, you can't make money out of it. And labelled for non-commercial reuse. These ones that just say, that don't mention modification, you're actually not allowed to change the photo at all. And people have got in trouble for taking photos and adapting them and saying, oh, but it's mine now because I changed it. That isn't how it works legally. That's absolute nonsense. So let's have a look for a penguin photo that we can use. I like, reckon, let's say, for non-commercial reuse with modification, because that's the sort of stuff we'd be using for our schoolwork. Now you'll notice that there is a different set of images here. And some people, some students complain and say, oh, but I don't want to use these images because they're not as good as these images. You know, the ones that I can't legally use. You know what, that might be true. A lot of the really good work people did spend considerable money making and they're not just going to give it to you. If you want to buy images, you can. There are stock photo sites that will sell you images anywhere from five bucks to five hundred dollars an image. They even sell bits of video. Um, if you're wanting it to put together an ad or a movie or a commercial presentation, then you need to go and pay people for their work and there's plenty of sites where you can do that. But right here are some images that we can just use. So let's have a scroll through. Um, I quite like this fella here. Um, let's grab him. I'm going to click on view image so that I get a good look at him. And I'm going to right click and save image as and save it to my desktop. There it is. Um, and I'm going to call it penguin just so that it's a bit easier for me to find. Uh, and I'm just going to replace the image I've got there that's called penguin. So there you go. That's a perfectly legal image for me to use. The person who owned that image has said, I'm fine with other people using this 
without paying me. That's what Creative Commons means. Pixabay is another good place to find things like that. Um, there are some links on the OneNote, but not all images are equal. You're not entitled to all of them any more than you're entitled to walk into people's homes and take things. And just because you've been doing it doesn't mean you should keep doing it. This is how you get images that it's both right to use and legal to use.